Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. This episode I'm going to show you how to make Christmas ornaments or ceramic Christmas ornaments with the laser cutter. So um, a little bit inspired by uh, one of my viewers. Uh, she was mentioning that uh, she was engraving tiles with the laser and so I thought it'd be kind of interesting to uh, actually engrave some ceramic Christmas ornaments and show you guys how it works. So what I did is I picked these up three bucks for two of them so basically about a buck and a half a piece at Hobby Lobby. Uh, these are rather coarse so it's not a smooth uh, finish on here it's kind of a little bit coarse. So uh, what I have is I have it mounted up in the machine so because of the opening size here I had to turn it sideways because I couldn't get the clamp to open up anymore. Uh, so we're going to have to rotate the image, so I'll walk you through that in laser draw. Also, one of the things to note, and I do have the beam deactivated, is uh, I actually accidentally ended up burning uh, a piece on here as I was setting the power level, because I am going to do this at about 10 milliamps, and uh, I had put this board over the top just to kind of give it a couple quick hits to adjust it, but it blew a hole right through the board and into the <laughs> ceramic, so... Uh, learn from my mistakes so don't do that so uh, but we're going to do some tests with it anyways so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, at about 10 milliamps um, 300 millimeters uh, per second so uh, engraved mode so I'm going to jump into laser draw I'm going to do this in laser draw so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over to that show you guys how that's all set up and how to do it and then we'll come back here and actually take a look and see what happens so Let's go over and jump inside the machine. All right, so here we are in laser draw. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to set up a new project. Uh, as you can see, I have here an old project. Actually, this is a test one. So we're going to go up here to File, and we're going to go to New Layout, which would be Control-N. And it's going to prompt us, since this uh, is not saved, I'm going to say no. Then I'm going to replace it. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is create a circular work area about 80 millimeters in diameter. So you can see that I have 80 for width and height, and then I have the ellipse picked from the drop down. So as you can see, you can choose several different shapes. Now, your work plane will always be square uh, or rectangular. Uh, however, what it does is inserts the circle you see. So again, I'm going to select ellipse. Now, one of the things that gives it a little bit larger uh, working space, and you can see here it adds about two millimeters because the margin is set to two. I typically accept that. And then we also have here mar create uh, main shape, which is this circular object you see back here. So once, once we go and click OK, it's just going to recreate what I had on the screen to begin with. So I've got this, this area here, which kind of shares, uh, you know, helps me determine where to place my graphic which I'm going to import. Uh, we'll delete this in the end but we want a pretty tight working surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to graph and we're going to go up to bitmap and uh, you can do different type of bitmaps. I'm going to do a JPEG and in this case I'm going to take one of my logos and I'm going to load that logo up and then when I hit OK notice how it turns to a crosshair. Now what I'm going to do is kind of draw out this crosshair until I get a rough square. Now it's not going to be perfect. You see I'm a little bit over but we'll adjust that in a minute. So now as you see we've got my logo. It's been imported as a bitmap. Now one of the things that we're going to do is just kind of move things over and adjust this for right now so it's roughly in the middle because what I want to do is kind of expand this and you notice as I pull it out it's, it expands proportionally and, and what I wanted to do is roughly fill the circle. And then so we've got it filled this, the circle. So now we have to tilt it. So we go up here to this blue arrow up here. Well, not really blue arrow, but blue box. And when it turns to rotate an image, what we're going to simply do is rotate this around and use this line over here as our guide to get this square. And then we're going to say, OK, we just release the mouse. And so we have it. So now that we've got all this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this circle. Just click anywhere on it, and I'm going to hit the delete key to remove it. Uh, it still leaves a trace here, which is okay. This is the um, 
trace that was created with that ellipse and uh, if we would it wouldn't have said create main object that object would would not have been created the one we just deleted so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to click um, for the laser burning and so we want to make sure we have engraving selected here and that's all good we want 300 millimeters per second and as I mentioned uh, we've got it set up for 10 milliamps now here's the piece so we can set over here how we want it so we can set it in the center and that's what actually we're going to do is set it for the center because what I'm going to do is roughly center this in the in the middle of that circle so this is the real trick here is is getting this centered in that plane and uh, so let's go ahead and I'm going to cut over to the camera I'm gonna start the camera now and so we can kind of see what's going on in the uh, real world so I'm gonna do a bit of an overlay so you, you can see that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on this piece I'm gonna do a little bit of panning here so bear with me because I want to get I want that to be the center so you kind of see everything that's going on so I've got to do a little bit of panning all right and then so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to grab this and adjust this till we're roughly centered on our um, work area now I find this actually fairly handy when I'm working with non rectilinear type objects um, so if it's not a square or rectangle I find it uh, better to use the the center of the object and now you kind of have to do just a little bit adjusting where everything is going to go and I'm just kind of looking here because one of the pieces you can do finer adjustments here both in reference X and reference Y so um, I need to do a little bit finer adjusting and what's happening is the head is moving oh so slowly and then you can also go in here and you can say I'm gonna say 95 and then I'm going to say 65 here and I I think I'm just a little bit high I think I'm gonna come back down uh, use a hundred mm, nah, I think I'd like sorry I think I like the 95 better um, okay I think that's pretty good so one of the things I am going to don my safety glasses I want to make sure that the camera is recording and then what I'm going to do is uh, let's see just make sure I've got everything set here I'm gonna say starting and then add task so we have it running and guess what I didn't activate the laser but this actually is uh, interesting to see that uh, it's kind of lining up where I want it to go actually I think I can go back a little bit so I may have actually discovered something here a little bit so if you've seen the camera you notice notice where the red dot is coming up further up to, up at the top uh, and it's just the laser actually giving me some messages inside Windows but you see how it's coming up to the top so I do need to back this up a little bit so I am going to uh, abort this job and I'm going to say yes and then I'm going to go back here so I'm going to try this over again so as you see in the camera I've gone back here to uh, my set position so I am going to instead of 95 I am going to go to 100 like before because uh, I think that was a little bit so all right this time we're going to arm the laser so laser is armed uh, make sure everything is on over there yep all right so we're gonna try this over again so we're gonna by clicking starting when I add this task 
it's going to start so here we go let's try it again all right now that's better so let's see how this goes so I'm going to time-lapse this okay so I've stopped this task um, it's marked a little bit but not very much um, quite frankly so it doesn't seem to be burning the uh, or marking the uh, ceramic now one of the things to kind of notice is that um, it's actually kind of burning off where I had mistakenly made that mark. So I'm not sure. There is there is a bit of indentation. Um, I want to deactivate this. Um, there is a little bit of, of ridge there. So it's actually, it has marked the... Uh, the ceramic but it hasn't discolored it so that's rather interesting um, I'm gonna re-energize the laser and I'm going to go back I've now turned it roughly all the way up so let's try this again Okay, this time I'm going to go with uh, closer to about 18 milliamps and I've cut the speed down to 150 millimeters per second. So let's see what we get with that. Okay, I'm disengaging the motors. Um, so I, I, it's it's etched a little bit of the, uh, and it's actually not very hot at all. I think that's part of the problem is it's it's absorbing the uh, heat. So I'm gonna try I'm gonna try one last go at this, and instead of engraving, I'm gonna try cutting it, and let's see what happens if I go full bore and try cutting it. So I'm gonna do some changes. So uh, let's watch inside the computer as I do this so I'm going to change from engraving to cutting and then I'm going to cut inside first and then I'm going to drop this down to 10 millimeters a second and I'm going to be running about 18 milliamps so I'm going to add this to start and I'm going to go so let's see how this um, this happens now Okay, we're back. This is reading about 90 degrees, so uh, yeah, no, actually it's gone up to about 124 degrees, so I don't want to quite grab this yet. But I don't know if you can see, but this is this is etched this very interestingly. Um, this is actually pretty interesting. This is actually cooler than I thought. Pardon the pun. Whoops, sorry I bumped you guys. Uh, I'm going to pan out a little bit. So I can uh, make sure I deactivate that. That is really, I'm not sure if this really, if this is coming out on the camera. But what's happened is the laser, by, by cutting it, and this is fairly warm, um, has glazed the surface. As I mentioned, this was rather rough. Uh, but this is this glazed it this well actually what happened is it melted the ceramic and um, 
So that's actually pretty cool. That came out pretty cool. So, um, I don't know, this came out a little bit different. You can't uh, obviously um, engrave this uh, because I think it dissipates the heat a little bit too much uh, unless you probably went with a real heavy, um, I'm sorry, not real heavy, but, but well, actually uh, heavy in the sense of about 18 milliamps at about 10 millimeters a second. Uh, but I think that would really, really tax the machine. But doing a cut where it engraves by, you know, cutting into it uh, is pretty interesting. So, um, hey, I found this actually very interesting. I'm going to try a couple different more, but I think you guys get the relative idea of this. So, hey, if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Don't forget about the swag shop. And, hey, we'll see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.